Brought to you by wikivd.com. Ruth Etting Ruth Etting was an American singing star and actress of the 1920s and 1930s, who had over 60 hit recordings and worked in stage, radio, and film. Known as America's Sweetheart of Song, her signature tunes were Shine On, Harvest Moon, Ten Cents a Dance and Love Me or Leave Me. Her other popular recordings included Button Up Your Overcoat, Mean to Me, Exactly Like You and Shaking the Blues Away. As a young girl in Nebraska, Etting had wanted to be an artist, she drew and sketched everywhere she was able. At 16, her grandparents decided to send her to art school in Chicago. While Etting attended class, she found a job at the Marigold Gardens nightclub. After a short time there, Etting gave up art classes in favor of a career in show business. Etting, who enjoyed singing in school and church, never took voice lessons. She quickly became a featured vocalist at the club. Etting was then managed by Mo Snyder, whom she married in 1922. Snyder made arrangements for Etting's recording and film contracts as well as her personal and radio appearances. She became nationally known when she appeared in Flo Ziegfeld's Follies of 1927. Etting intended to retire from performing in 1935, but this did not happen until after her divorce from Snyder in 1937. Harry Merle Alderman, Etting's pianist, was separated from his wife when he and Etting began a relationship. Snyder did not like seeing his former wife in the company of other men, and began making telephone threats to Etting in January 1938. By October, Snyder traveled to Los Angeles and detained Alderman after he left a local radio station. He forced the pianist to take him to the home of his ex-wife at gunpoint, saying he intended to kill Etting, Alderman, and his own daughter, Edith, who worked for Etting. Snyder shot Alderman. Three days after Alderman was shot, his wife filed suit against Etting for alienation of affections. While Alderman and Etting claimed to have been married in Mexico in July 1938, Alderman's divorce would not be final until December of that year. The couple was married during Mo Snyder's trial for attempted murder in December 1938. Etting and Alderman relocated to a farm outside of Colorado Springs, Colorado, where they were primarily out of the spotlight for most of their lives. Her fictionalized story was told in the 1955 film Love Me or Leave Me, with Doris Day as Ruth Etting and James Cagney as Snyder. Biography Etting was born in David City, Nebraska in 1897 to Alfred, a banker, and Winifred Etting. Her mother died when she was five years old and she then went to live with her paternal grandparents, George and Hannah Etting. Her father remarried and moved away from David City and was no longer a part of his daughter's life. Etting's grandfather, George, owned the Etting Roller Mills, to the delight of his granddaughter. George Etting allowed traveling circuses and chose to use the lot behind the mills. For performances, Etting was interested in drawing at an early age. She drew and sketched anywhere she was able. Her grandparents were asked to buy the textbooks she had used at the end of a school term because Etting had filled them with her drawings. She left David City at the age of 16 to attend art school in Chicago. Etting got a job designing costumes at the Marigold Gardens nightclub, which led to employment singing and dancing in the chorus there. She gave up art school soon after going to work at Marigold Gardens. Before turning exclusively to performing, Etting worked as a designer for the owner of a costume shop in Chicago's Loop. She was successful enough to earn a partnership in the shop through her work. While she enjoyed singing at school and in church, Etting never took voice lessons. She said that she had patterned her song styling after Marion Harris, but created her own unique style by alternating tempos and by varying some notes and phrases. Describing herself as a high, squeaky soprano during her days in David City, Etting developed a lower range singing voice after her arrival in Chicago, which led to her success. Her big moment came when a featured vocalist suddenly became ill and was unable to perform. With no other replacement available, Etting was asked to fill in 
She quickly changed into the costume and scanned the music arrangements. The performer was male. So Etting tried to adjust by singing in a lower register. She became a featured vocalist at the nightclub and married gangster Martin Mo the Gimp Snyder on July 17, 1922 in Crown Point, Indiana. Etting described herself as a young, naive girl when she arrived in Chicago. Due to her inexperience in the ways of the big city, she became reliant on Snyder after their meeting. Etting and Snyder met in 1922, when she was performing at the Marigold Gardens. Snyder, who divorced his first wife, to marry Etting, was well acquainted with Chicago's nightclubs, and the entertainers who worked in them. He once served as a bodyguard to Al Jolson. Snyder also used his political connections to get bookings for Etting, who was called Miss City Hall, because of Snyder's influence in Chicago. She later said she married him, nine-tenths out of fear and one-tenth out of pity. Etting later told her friends, if I leave him, he'll kill me. He managed her career, booking radio appearances, and eventually had her signed to an exclusive recording contract with Columbia Records stage, screen and radio. The couple moved to New York in 1927, where Etting made her Broadway debut in the Ziegfeld Follies of 1927. Irving Berlin had recommended her to showman Florence Ziegfeld. Etting nervously prepared to sing for Ziegfeld at the audition. However, he did not ask her to sing at all, only to walk up and down the room, she was hired on that basis, because Ziegfeld did not hire women with big ankles. While the original plan for the show was for Etting to do a tap dance after singing, shaking the blues away, she later remembered she was not a very good dancer. At the show's final rehearsal, Flo Ziegfeld told her, Ruth, when you get through singing, just walk off the stage. Etting also appeared in Ziegfeld's Last Follies in 1931. She went on to appear in a number of other hit shows in rapid succession, including Ziegfeld's Simple Simon and Whoopee. Etting was not originally signed to perform in Simple Simon. She became part of the cast at the last minute when vocalist Lee Morse was too intoxicated to perform. Ziegfeld asked Etting to replace Morse. She hurried to Boston, where the show was being tried out prior to Broadway. When Etting arrived, songwriters Rogers and Harp discovered that the song, Ten Cents a Dance, was not written for Etting's voice range. The three spent the night rewriting the song so Etting could perform it. Toward the end of Simple Simon's Broadway run, Etting persuaded Ziegfeld to add, Love Me or Leave Me to the show though the song was originally written for Whoopee. She had recorded the song in 1928, but Etting's new version of it was impressive enough to earn her a Vitaphone contract to make film shorts. In Hollywood, Etting made a long series of movie shorts between 1929 and 1936, and three feature movies in 1933 and 1934. She described the short films as either having a simple plot to allow for her to sing two songs or with no plot at all. The idea was to have Etting sing at least two songs in the film. While she received a marquee billing for Roman scandals, Etting had only two lines in the film and sang just one song. Etting believed she might have had more success in full-length films if she had been given some acting lessons. Her perception was that the studios viewed her only as a vocalist. She later recalled, I was no actress, and I knew it, but I could sell a song. In 1936, she appeared in London in Ray Henderson's Transatlantic Rhythm. Etting was first heard on radio station WLS when she was living in Chicago. Her appearance drew so much fan mail, the station signed her to a year's contract. For twice-weekly performances, she had her own twice-weekly 15-minute radio show on CBS in the 1930s. By 1934, she was on NBC, with sports announcer Ted Husing doing the announcing and Oldsmobile sponsoring her program. Thank you for watching, brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.